The movie opens up as a middle-aged man named Mark wakes up early in the morning and starts freshening up. Strangely, he notices that the water supply and electricity in his apartments are out. Despite this, Mark somehow gets ready for work. But as he is about to leave, he finds the main door firmly locked. At the same time, he also loses his phone network. When he tries opening the door, he notices that it has been shut with a sealant from outside. Distraught, Mark goes to the window to get some fresh air. But surprisingly, even this is sealed shut. Right then, he sees other people in the opposite building banging on their windows for help. He also notices a group of people wearing hazmat suits and roaming around the neighborhood. Ignoring all of this, Mark grabs his hammer and tries to break the door open, but ends up hurting himself badly. Just then, someone from the other side of Mark's room breaks the wall and enters his apartment. A hot-tempered boy, Sergei, and his little brother Nico barge in. Sergei immediately goes to check on the windows, but finds out that Mark is also stuck in the same situation as him. Soon, a next-door couple, Sally and Aiden, also come through the hole in the wall. It appears as if someone has locked the entire floor from outside. Aiden, being a government officer, is scared about the situation and predicts that something bad is going to happen. He desperately tries calling for help, but to no avail. Meanwhile, the intercom of the apartment rings, and a voice informs them to remain calm while the medical staff is trying to take control of the situation. This worries the already terrified group even more. Later, Sally, being a nurse, treats Mark's wounded hand and puts some stitches on it. As the two engage in small talk, Mark suddenly remembers his elderly neighbor, Enid. Wasting no time, he orders Sergei to break down the wall to her apartment and ventures inside. He finds her lying on the floor, but luckily, Enid is just sleeping. In the next scene, the entire group stands by the window to find out what's actually happening. They notice the hazmat suit-wearing workers building temporary medical tents in the neighborhood. Meanwhile, the intercom rings again, and this time, the voice suggests everyone stay indoors as there has been a noxious gas leak. However, Aiden does not buy it. He believes that the authorities are trying to hide something serious from them. Mark also spots a couple of medical workers spraying disinfectants in the building and escorting some infected people to their camp. Suddenly, when a man tries to set himself free and run away. He gets shot by a sniper. This shocks everyone looking from their windows. Shortly after, the hazmat-wearing employees start barging inside nearby apartments. When the residents don't comply with the protocols, they are dragged outside. Witnessing this, Mark and the group realize that the medical staff can arrive at their apartment anytime. Hence, they start brainstorming ideas to break the door and escape. After some time deliberating about a possible solution, Mark remembers that he has some corrosive chemicals in his apartment that could be used to melt the ceiling and ultimately open the door. The group immediately starts searching for the chemicals. Once they find them, Mark mixes them and creates a mixture. He then pours it on the bottom of the main door, and surprisingly, the plan works. Mark is goddamn Heisenberg. The sealant is instantly loosened, and after the group pushes the door with all their might, it finally opens. Following this, the group starts formulating a plan so that they can reach safety without being caught. One thing's for sure, they have to be aware of the snipers hiding at the top of the building. While they are discussing the counter measures, Enid realizes that Nico has gone missing. As a result, everyone abandons the plan and starts looking for the boy. Meanwhile, a terrified Nico has crawled down through the air vent. He reaches another floor and notices a couple of hazmat-wearing staff trying to convince a woman to come with them. They even inject her with a sedative, but suddenly, the woman starts coughing profusely and falls unconscious. It appears as if the air has been plagued with something deadly. Meanwhile, Mark finally finds Nico and throws a makeshift rope to pull him out of the vent. But before the boy can grab it, the hazmat-wearing staff spot him and pull him away. Fearing for his brother's life, Sergei grabs a baseball bat and runs downstairs, while Mark follows closely behind. Soon, the two approach the hazmat guys, and an enraged Sergei lashes out at one of them. The man dies on the spot, and after this, Sergei grabs the other staff member and forcefully takes her to their apartment. Sally goes through her belongings and finds a couple of smoke grenades. This makes her suspect that there is something wrong with whatever is going around. Mark tries to interrogate the female staff, but Sergei drags her to the window and displays her to the other people with the note, I've got one. After tying the girl up, Mark speaks with her gently and asks her what is going on. The girl introduces herself as Hazel, Hazel the hazmat wearer, and informs the group that they're there to help. Hearing this, Mark tries to remove her protective hazmat suit, but she gets scared and shrugs him away. This convinces Mark that they're 
their place has been infected with some sort of virus. He then threatens her to reveal everything, and now, with their life on the line, Hazel finally starts speaking. She reveals that the entire area has been plagued with a deadly virus that can kill people within hours. The symptoms include vigorous coughing, difficulty in breathing, and even blindness. Although the scientists have been working tirelessly to find a cure, nothing conclusive has been found. Mark inquires as to why all the communication systems have been shut down, to which Hazel responds that the government doesn't want the general public to know about the virus. After all, when they found out about COVID, they bought a bunch of toilet paper and stupid shit like that. The more people panic, the more difficult it will be to contain the virus. She also reveals that the people in the room have a 50-50 chance of contracting the virus. Hearing all this, Sergei once again becomes angry. He quickly grabs a knife and tears out her protective clothing. This terrifies Hazel, so she reaches out to her pocket and takes out an injection. But before she can use it, Sergei snatches it from her hand and keeps it with himself. As everyone looks at her in disbelief, Hazel reveals that the vaccine is still in its testing phase and there's no assurance that it will work. Hence, the best thing to do right now is to stay indoors until the authorities take care of the situation. At night, while the whole group is discussing the measures to get out of the place, Hazel sneaks her hand from the Ziploc and tries to escape. But before she can reach the door, Sergei pins her to the ground and starts beating her. Mark tries to stop him but ends up facing the wrath of Sergei. The commotion finally stops when Sergei inadvertently slaps Nico and makes him cry. Later, the group notices an angry mob of people marching towards their building. It appears as if they also want to confront Hazel to learn about the present condition. By this time, all the other hazmat-wearing staff have either been killed or chased away. Scared, Hazel tells the group to keep out the mob at all costs, as they might have been infected with the virus. This alarms the group, and they quickly block the entrance with a heavy object. Soon, the mob also arrives and starts banging on the door. Sally goes near the door and tries to calm them down, but instead gets hit in the neck by a broken piece of glass. With time running out, Sergei throws the smoke bomb at the angry people and drags Sally to their apartment. Sadly, it is already too late, and Sally has lost a lot of blood. Even though Hazel tries her best to save her, she is unable to. This devastates everyone, especially Aiden, who breaks down and goes to the other room. In the following scene, after the group wraps Sally's body with a piece of cloth, they search for Aiden but cannot find him anywhere. It turns out that he has already escaped from the apartment, wearing Hazel's hazmat suit. When he reaches outside, the other residents mistake him for medical staff and immediately surround him. What did he think was going to happen? They harass him for vaccines and start beating him up. Just then, the sniper fires a warning shot, prompting everyone except for Aiden to run away from the place. Sadly, despite Aiden wearing a hazmat suit, he is identified as an infected patient and shot to death. That was the worst plan I've ever seen in a pandemic movie. Elsewhere, Sergei goes to check out the entrance and notices a group of residents rushing towards them. He asks his remaining group to move out of the room as soon as possible. However, Mark does not want to leave Hazel alone, so he tries to untie her. But before he can do so, an enraged Sergei knocks him out with a baseball bat. This leaves Hazel in a precarious situation with nowhere to hide. After some time, Mark regains consciousness and rushes to search for Nico and the others. When he peers through the window, he notices two hazmat guys preparing to release poisonous gas around the building. Soon, he finds his group and immediately attacks Sergei for knocking him out earlier. He is about to choke him to death, but Enid intervenes and calms him down. Just then, the poisonous gas is released everywhere, prompting the group to rush to the roof. On their way, Mark notices the dead body of Hazel and becomes sad. Meanwhile, a surviving resident from the building approaches Sergei for help, but is brutally beaten up by the hot-tempered brat. He keeps on on beating the man until other residents swarm him and hold him captive. Sergei looks to Mark and screams for help, but the latter can do nothing other than close the door and continue their way to the rooftop. After a bit of a struggle, Mark finally leads Enid and Nico to the rooftop. Since it is the first time in days that they are breathing fresh air, they decide to sleep here. It's not like poisonous gas is rising towards them or anything. The following morning, Mark wakes up and starts getting ready to escape from the building. However, when he tries waking the old Enid up, she doesn't budge. It turns out that she passed away in her sleep. Now, with only little Nico left by his side, Mark wants to protect him at all costs. He tells the boy to close his eyes for as long as he can and pretend as if he is playing a game. Then, he carries Nico on his back and brings him downstairs. On the way, Mark comes across a lot of dead bodies and becomes distraught. Yet, he still carries on. His determination finally pays off as the duo successfully escapes the building. Mark looks around for help, but no one is there. Even the contamination camp have been deserted. Suddenly, he hears an announcement going around.
around, suggesting that people stay indoors. If anyone other than medical personnel is seen, they will be apprehended. As a result, Mark puts on a hazmat suit and proceeds to get out of the area with Nico. Let's hope this works out better than it did for Aiden. Unfortunately, just after a few minutes, they are confronted by a man from the opposite building who mistakes Mark for one of the medical staff. He mentions that his wife died because of the virus and that the authorities have taken his daughter away. He then grabs Nico and points a sharp piece of glass at him. Mark tries his best to make the man understand that he too is a civilian, but his efforts are futile. These hazmat suits are bad ideas. Just then, Nico gets away from the man, but Mark is not so lucky. He is stabbed in the stomach and fatally wounded. Distraught, Nico helps Mark up, and as the two walk away slowly, the assailant realizes his mistake. After a while, they reach a nearby park, and Mark sits on a swing. He then gives Nico his cell phone and instructs him to make a call as soon as he gets service. Little Nico, oblivious that his only friend is dying, tries to get him up, but Mark pretends that he is just tired. He tells Nico that he will join him shortly after taking a nap. The little boy believes it and continues on his way, while Mark finally succumbs to his injuries. In the last scene, Nico is captured by a couple of hazmat-wearing staff who inject him with a sedative. When he opens his eyes, he finds himself with other children his age. One of the hazmat-wearing staff approaches him and assures him that everything is going to be fine. The movie ends as Nico operates his cell phone and contemplates whether to make a call or not. The moral of today's story is to never put on a hazmat suit. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.